A viral video showing a mob beat the ever living crap out of a guy who attacked a woman. Now, it is believed this video is new. It may not be. It may not be. But it's not the first story we've heard about vigilantes rising in New York because the police don't do anything. And it's been this way for some time. But the stories about women getting attacked are getting pretty serious. Now, of course, of course, we had that viral article where this woman wrote that it was MAGA's fault that men are punching women in the face. And by all means, we can talk about the irony of many women voting for Democrat policies, which explicitly state they will release criminals and then getting shocked and upset when releasing criminals result in more crime. It is a bit ironic that your utopian policies have resulted in conflict and chaos for you. But the reality of what's going to happen is you will get vigilantes. There's no other way around it. In this video, a guy hits a woman, which we've been seeing consistently for months now, and then one by one, bystanders just start beating the crap out of this dude. It's crazy. But the stories coming out of New York are getting much more worrisome. It's not just about guys punching women in the face. Look, I think there's a humor in the irony of women getting hit. And, and, and to, to varying degrees, it is it's not so serious. No, no, no. Hold on. I don't think it's funny explicitly that like a guy hits a woman. Of course not. And that's what many of these leftists and conservatives wanted to play it up as. Now, what's funny is the irony. It's not schadenfreude. Do you guys know what schadenfreude is? Schadenfreude is pain, is pleasure derived from uh, the, the pain of your enemies. So it's like watching someone you don't like get hurt makes you feel good. This is not that. I had a tweet where I said, I think it's funny that we're getting punched in the face. It's a specific reference to women who are claiming these policies will make the city better, demanding them, voting for them, and then reaping the benefits of their own actions, its consequences. But it's irony, which is a form of humor. Now, let's be real. I don't want anybody getting hit. I don't want anybody getting hurt. I think this is a harsh lesson. You vote to release criminals. These things will happen. But now it's getting scary. OK, and this is actually a story from March from a month ago. I think people need to realize the severity of how bad things are in New York. And nobody thinks it's funny that they've been shoving people in front of trains, shooting people. There was one story from a couple years ago where a guy was crossing the street with his little girl, his daughter, and a car drives up and shoots him. And we got this story. Man burned woman with hot water in unprovoked Manhattan attack. You're not safe walking the streets. Now, I think the issue we have here is that everybody lives in a bias bubble. And that is people in New York, these liberals. Oh, I love this one. There was this video during lockdown where this guy films himself going, what's going on? Everybody says that the city's in trouble and it's locked down, but I can do whatever I want and gloating about it. And this guy was in a rich neighborhood. So what happens is the uppity well-to-do liberals who write these blogs are like, oh, I've walked the streets and I've never had a thing happen to me as they walk the Upper West Side surrounded by their police. Granted, many of these women are actually now getting hit. And this is why they're getting so angry. No, I will not face the consequences of my vote. Now, ain't nobody want to see this happen. Man burned woman with hot water and unprovoked attack. Check this out. Police at the attack near West 35th Street and 8th Avenue on Wednesday morning appeared to be unprovoked. It happened when the suspect, identified as 42-year-old Larry Martin, walked by the 27-year-old woman. Martin and the woman did not know each other. I think that that's appalling, and it gives the city a bad name. Gee, you wonder? If she's a tourist, she probably won't come back again. Hopefully, she's okay. She was treated for minor injuries all over her body and was expected to be okay. This is horrifying. Someone, take a look at this. We have this from Atlanta Black Star. New York City man accused of dousing four women with scalding hot water in random attacks smiles broadly during unsettling court appearance. Uh, look, Daniel Penny is facing jail. You've got the National Guard deployed checking people's bags, and I'll tell you why. Many people are wondering why it is that these criminals are allowed to roam free. They're beating women in the streets. They're scalding them now with, with, with scalding water. But on the subway, they're going to search little old granny's bag. Make sure you don't got any weapons. It's obvious. New York City fears 
the same thing I do for different reasons. They fear vigilante justice. There was already a guy, what was it, back in November, fired a gun in the subway because some guy was robbing some woman. They're going to lock him up. Don't worry about it. I don't recommend firing a gun in the subway, by the way. Not that I know what you should do. Don't look at me. I'm not the expert on how these things should be, should be dealt with. I don't have good answers for what New York should be doing other than perhaps enforcing the law and having police arrest people and keeping them in jail. But where we are now, it's getting absolutely crazy. They want, they search your bags to make sure you do not get another Daniel Penny. Or what was that guy's name? Oh, man, let me let me make sure I get it. I can't believe. Uh, I forgot the uh, Bernie Getz. That was his name. Bernard Getz. He was the guy in 1984 was on a train, said some dudes were shaking him down. So he shot him. And apparently said some brutal things, but people cheered for him. He was an anti-hero. Apparently he shot a dude. The guy was on the ground and he's like, you don't look so bad. And then shot him again. And people cheered for it. That's crazy. They cheered for it. Nah. Look, man, you don't want to cheer for this kind of thing when, when, when society starts breaking down in this way. What you want to che- I, I get why people were happy. Crime was rampant. Pe- pe- like these dudes who were involved in this conflict said, admitted they were actually on their way to go commit a robbery or something like that. I want to be careful because I don't, I don't have all the details pulled up. But people cheered for it. This guy, Larry Martin, dressed in an orange inmate jumpsuit, made his first appearance March 28th and smiled gleefully at photographers during his arraignment before Manhattan criminal court judge Curtis J. Farber, who denied bail. Finally, someone's denied bail. But the funny thing is you had uh, these people in Long Island found with blood and guts in their drains and body parts strewn about, and they were released. Yeah, they said it's not bail eligible. You're free to go. And at first I thought not bail eligible meant you will not receive bail. You're going to jail. What it really meant was They were not eligible for being held. Interesting. Unbothered, Martin maintained the smiling expression throughout the entire proceeding and even appeared to laugh as he was let out in handcuffs. Martin did not appear to have an attorney at the hearing, and he did not appear to enter a plea. It was not clear if Martin intended his unsettling smile as a protest, but the case against him was no laughing matter. His arrogant manner in the courtroom contradicted the serious nature of the charges, including four counts each of second degree assault and first degree attempted assault in connection with the frightening series of unprovoked attacks during the March 6th morning commute. So this guy just decided to go randomly, randomly go around splashing people with scalding hot water. The first of four attacks was reported at 7, 10 a.m. when a man was severely burned at East 44th Street and Lexington Avenue. I thought I said it was four women where a suspect splashed hot water in the victim's head and neck. Half an hour later, a 49 year old woman was attacked by the same suspect at the corner of Sixth Avenue where the unwitting victim was hit with a scalding liquid in the face before she had time to react. Authorities said she sustained severe burns and hearing loss. The serial splasher struck next at 8.15 a.m. outside the Times Square subway station at the southeast corner of 7th Avenue and West 42nd Street, where a 45-year-old woman was met with hot liquid to the face. The last attack occurred at 8.40 a.m. when the suspect flung scalding water onto a 27-year-old woman's chest and hands, at West 35th Street and 8th Avenue. All the victims are expected to fully recover. Previous reports revealed that Martin is a homeless man with connections to a Brooklyn shelter. He underwent a mental health evaluation at a local hospital following his arrest and could later factor into his prosecution. He had been arrested twice before. Surprise, surprise. Once in August 2021 for allegedly assaulting a 70-year-old man in Queens and again in 2022 when he was taken into custody in connection with the same incident. Now, hold on. He was never prosecuted and the case remains unsolved. That's what they say. Innocent until proven guilty. I'll give him that. Seriously, I think it's important. But you arrest a guy like this. This is the point of bail hearings. If it is a violent crime and you have a preponderance of evidence, I think it's fair we hold you. I do. I'm not a fan of cash bail. You've got to have a hearing, but you can't just release violent criminals. Now, as for people who are accused the first time, I I look at it this way. If you've never been accused of a crime, We can talk about bail, but it's got to be a bail hearing. They got to present a preponderance of evidence that you're a violent threat. If it is your first case and they and they have a preponderance of evidence that you're a violent threat, clearly visible like on video, I think it's fair to say no bail. You go to jail. We hold you. But for many instances, I think it is fair to say people should not be locked up until you can prove it on the first go around. If you've got multiple arrests, I think at this point, the preponderance of evidence is you're a criminal. 
Last week, Manhattan DA Alvin Bragg vowed Martin would pay for his alleged crimes while expressing sympathy for his victims. Well, it doesn't matter. This is the fear. Vigilante justice. Look at this group. They just start railing on this guy. A crowd of New Yorkers were filmed banding together against a man seen punching a woman in a seemingly random attack. The attack occurred on 14th and 7th Avenue and was caught on camera by an apartment dweller overhead. It comes amid a, ra- amid a rash of reports of women being assaulted on the streets. Though in this case, the attack was thwarted by a group of complete strangers. I said this was going to happen. You're going to see a rise in vigilantism. And then what are they going to do about it? Well, like Daniel Penny, they'll probably try to hunt down and arrest the vigilantes. It won't matter. Where we are headed in this country, maybe it's on purpose to destroy it. The left already does not recognize the government. You have roving gangs taking over city streets like we saw on the Bay Bridge a few days ago. And now you've got vigilantes. And the vigilantes don't seem to be organized. It's just regular people realizing the most important thing. The police will not protect you. They will not protect, protect these women. They will not arrest these men. And so what do they do? They take it upon themselves to start beating the crap out of a guy who attacked a woman. He just apparently looked like an unprovoked attack like we've seen. And this is what you'll get. Not that we want it. We don't want anything like it. I'd like for the police to actually do their jobs. And they say they can't do it. They can't do it. They can certainly arrest Daniel Penny. They can certainly march Penny off in cuffs, uh, in cuffs, but they can't deal with this. I don't buy it. It's will. The cops. See, here's the issue. As I keep saying, conservatives are the only group in this country keeping the country, at, the, the, the government actually in power because they, they respect it. Daniel Penny says, well, you're the cop. I guess I'm under arrest. Puts his hand behind his back. Antifa swings at cops, throws thing at cops. And the cops are like, I'm not going to try to arrest that guy. He's going to hit me. So there's two guys. There's Proud Boys. There's Antifa. Antifa says, don't you try it. The cop says, I won't. Proud Boy says, right this way, officer. You can cuff me. What do you think's going to happen? The cops gladly arrest the Proud Boys and Antifa gets to run away and skip to go fight another day because they don't recognize the authority of the cops and they will fight against them. And the Proud Boys recognize the cops and say, officer friendly, here's all of my information. And the cops then arrest them. Daniel Penny protecting people from a violent criminal. And he gets to go to jail for it. Or they try to put him in jail for it. We'll see what happens. Remarkable. And the police officers with smiles like the Joker on their faces laughing. I mean that figuratively, obviously with no problem whatsoever as they arrest the good guy. And they come to me and they say, Tim, you got to back the blue, man. You got no. We had a couple of cops on here in the culture war. And even these officers were saying like, Tim, you get these things wrong. However, I was ousted from the department by corrupt officials in both instances. I don't think cops are all bad. I think that's silly. I think you have a negative pressure environment. That is a cop is standing there. And his boss says, arrest that man. And he goes, that guy's got a gun. That guy's going to swing at me and fight me and try and stab me. And then he goes, well, he got away, I guess. Well, I don't blame you. Wait a minute. How about that guy who just offended people on a subway? Arrest him. You got it, boss. And he walks right to Daniel Penny and says, Mr. Penny, I understand you just saved the lives of people. Now put your hands behind your back because I will destroy your life. This is what the cops are doing. And I'm supposed to sit here and defend the police when they say I can't go after this guy punching these women. We can't arrest them. We can't do anything about it. But Daniel Penny dare stand up and the cops will say this one's going to be easy. I am not going to defend that. Never. You get mad at me in the comments. You complain all day and night. But when you have a system that is so broken. And again, I don't blame an individual cop. I blame a negative pressure environment. I ain't going to back the blue, though, because I'll tell you what's going to happen because it already happened. And I've referenced this numerous times. Gavin McInnes speaking at a Republican club in New York, as is his right. Antifa surrounding the blocks around the, 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 the building, the club, harassing people, threatening them. Eventually, a group of Proud Boys seeing Antifa at the at, at the end of the street are, are confronted with a choice. Keep trying to walk away and walk and find a way through the varying groups that are surrounding the the, the, the club or say, okay, these people are threatening us and engage in engage in the conflict. 
So they did. The Proud Boys start making their move towards Antifa. So when Antifa throws a bottle, the Proud Boys say, let's go. They fight. I think it's fair to say antagonized by Antifa. You can make the argument for Antifa instigation showing up to the to the conservative event and instigating violence. But uh, perhaps you can say uh, mutual combat. Proud Boys decided they were going to fight Antifa. OK. And what happens when the police show up, the Proud Boys Strong, conservative, American loving individuals say, thank you, officer, for helping us deal with this. Here's my name, date of birth and address. And Antifa, with their masks on, scream, F you pig and run. So what do the cops do? They say, well, thank you all so much for uh, uh, letting us know what happened. We're now going to put you in prison for four years. Back the blue. The Proud Boys who are being harassed and antagonized by a far left death cult who has Uh, under the banner of Antifa, shot and killed people before, went to prison. And then the the conservatives are like, back the blue. A guy in his home in Wisconsin. BLM protesters show up screaming in front of his house. This same group had set fire to a house before. This is in in Wisconsin, Milwaukee area. Might have been Madison. I think it was Milwaukee. The man brandishes a shotgun through his window. The police show up, pull him from his own home and arrest him for doing so. We live in this world. And I warned, I warned when before this happened that when the mob comes to your house, the cops with twisted Joker smiles will be like you, family man, you're going to jail. You know why? It is easier to arrest one man who will gladly put his hands behind his back than it would be to deal with the mob. And that's what you'll get. And that's where we are. Woman critically injured after being punched and robbed outside Queens Church. Here we go, baby. Trump Organization former chief financial officer Alan Weisselberg sentenced to five months in jail. What did he do? Former chief, he sentenced to five months in jail after he admitted to lying during Trump's New York civil fraud trial. Five months. How dare you lie? Donald Trump's growing, going down. Hey, look, I'll be fair. Perjury is a crime. And then we have this guy, brazen NYC gangbanger who's already racked up nine arrests this year, keeps getting cut loose due to woke bail reform. You will never convince me to, quote unquote, back the blue. It's not going to happen. And it's not because cops are good or bad. Okay, it's because the environment today exists in which a cop has a job. He's going to feed his family. He doesn't care about nothing else. He's going to take care of himself. And when his boss says, you can try to arrest a guy who's attacking women. Good luck. I hope you're ready for a fight. Or you can try to arrest Daniel Penny. He goes, and Daniel Penny's easy. Conservatives, without question, get on their knees and say, thank you, officer. May I have another? And you end up with people on the right going to jail. And then you have gangbangers, criminals, woman abusers getting away with it. And it's simple. It's not just about what Democrat policy is. It is about the fact that any human being confronted with a violent psychopath or a God fearing American Christian man who will not resist the police and backs the blue. Who's he going to arrest? It's really obvious. If you have the option of the stairs or the escalator, people tend to choose the escalator. Now, I'm actually the kind of person who takes the stairs. Yeah. I mean, if I got a bunch of bags with me while I'm flying, I'll take the escalator or the elevator because you can't, you don't really have a choice. But if I'm wearing a a single heavy backpack, I actually prefer the stairs. Build that strength. I was watching this uh, commercial. I was watching Fox News and they had a commercial for a stair mobility chairlift. And I understand uh, many people need them. And I looked at my girlfriend and I said, I, I will be 90 years old and I will drag myself up the stairs screaming before I use one of those chairs. And she laughed and said, oh, OK, yeah, right. Yeah. And perhaps it is just youthful exuberance and arrogance. My point is, for me, we have to we have to make the hard choices. We have to. And the hard choice is this. If I was a cop. And they said, we're going to have you arrest Daniel Penny. 
the guy who was protecting people on a subway from a dangerous psychopath who had attacked people before, I'd say, no. And they would say, you have to do it. It's your job. And I say, my job is to stop criminals, to enforce the law and uphold it and protect the people of the city. This man is not the person we should be arresting. And you couldn't make me do it. And then I know what would happen. I'd be ousted. The officers we had in the culture war said exactly that. They tried to get him to engage in corruption when they said no, they kicked him out. And so be it. And that's the issue. So when people say, Tim, you're always wondering where the good cops are. You see what happens? Exactly. So why am I going to assume the cops that remain are the good cops? No, they're the bad cops. The good cops got kicked out for refusing to be evil. And here we are. Take a look at New York City. I ain't back in the blue, baby. Not happening. I don't have good answers for you because the system is broken. We want the good cops, but they're getting kicked out. I don't know what to tell you, man. It's getting bad up there. I'll leave it there. Next segment's coming up at 4 p.m. on this channel. Thanks for hanging out, and I'll see you all then.